Hi, this is Shadi. Today we're going to be discussing the Armenian legend Karo Parisian. Um, he has been on my list for a number of years uh, at this point, but better late than never. His judo is absolutely phenomenal and he took it to the octagon and became a legend. So today we're going to be looking of multiple ways to grip your opponent and to apply the very foundational throws of judo. I have tried several times to reach out to him actually but no response unfortunately but again it doesn't prevent us from discussing his uh, judo in the octagon. So upper body throws in my opinion are not only more aesthetic and with more amplitude and picturesque but also far less riskier in my opinion. So without further ado let's start so as you can see immediate wrist control and uh, overhook which really puts someone in a bent over position and it can be any type of hip throws whether it is an uchimata with your hips here you see justin flores explaining how you can punch with one hip and then launch your leg as you have the overhook and a tricep control or a wrist control can also be good and then from there you put your head down and launch your leg up it doesn't have to be with the hips you can just stab with the leg and then only uh, reap the inner thigh but if you are shorter make use of those hips another thing i want to talk about is the overhook and the underhook use so if we go back to the old form of judo, here you see this sweeping hip throw. Uh, he switches from lapel grip to an underhook and then it's used to bring them close and then turns away and then sweep upwards. So the thing with overhook and underhook, it keeps them close to you and at the same time they lose their balance, which all you have to do is take care of the lower body of the throw which makes it far easier than with the sleeve and the lapel i know it's controversial but there's just a lot of intricacies when it comes to gripping the lapel and the sleeve and how you unbalance but when you have control of the shoulder and you are bringing them closer to you all you need to take care of is the lower portion of the throw and that's why it makes it very successful now here this low kick turned into an ankle pick um, I can't help but think of those old Hiza Guruma that turned into an ankle pick uh, in classical judo. So you see the ankle pick or the knee pick also uh, are hand techniques that for the moment are uh, banned but they did have their place in uh, old judo and certainly in the Gokyo. Now this particular incident that you saw it's very reminiscent of this one here, the Hiza Guruma that was caught and turned into an ankle pick. But obviously, instead of kicking, he was trying to wheel him over the knee. Very similar concept, but it's a strike. Now here you see uh, all the weight was put on the foot and then reaped to the front uh, of the ankle. It's a minor outer reap, very efficient. You see a lot of the female uh, Japanese judo team use it a lot and to a large success because it's low risk and yet it can really put someone in a stressful uh, position. Now here you see this Seoi Otoshi he just cuts down with the sword does not engage his back or his hips so in my opinion this makes it a Seoi Otoshi and not a Nage so there is a lot of variation to this throw either on one knee uh, or you only cut down with one hand or it can be sleeve and lapel or it can be on two knees the uh, possibilities are endless but the main concept is to get down drop down and then cut down with your hands while keeping uh, your back not so much engaged but only drop them by cutting down with your hands now there is seoi nage when you drop down, but it's different and I'll show you the difference. So here you can see it can either be with one arm or here, sleeve and lapel, one knee or two knees. 
and you do not engage the back and lift up with the back and the hips as you drop down which makes it an otoshi so he just dropped down and cut down with the hands so there's the difference now here this double wrist lock grip into a sacrificing technique known as sumi gaishi and you can also get it by gripping the head let's take a look at the legendary masahiko kimura who would use it as a turnover into a pin or of course uh, a full score depending on the rules so it can be from the belt grip this is what it's called um, uh, hikikomi gaishi because of the belt pull but the lower body with the legs and how you throw away by kicking on the inner thigh it's still the common but it's how you unbalance that differs so either it is a double wrist lock uh, front headlock or here you see belt grip or it can be a um, double wrist lock like I mentioned but as you pull them towards you and launch the leg it is still the very basic fundamentals of judo that he took to the octagon and turned himself into a legend and of course honored the great art of judo nonetheless so next is this massive a major outer reap or o sotogari from a double wrist lock grip people think that o sotogari is just um, sleeve lapel or a cross uh, lapel grip into o sotogari no it has endless variations of gripping and i will show you so this is the classical form sleeve and lapel you put all the weight on the leg you are about to reap and then you proceed to go forward and a massive reap while punching down but you can also do this you can block the back while keeping control of the arm or having a double wrist control like Karo or here you can see you can pull the belt towards you and then you keep them close to you which makes the unbalancing much easier as I mentioned earlier or here with two sleeves this one here a minor inner reap so also called ko uchi gari so his arsenal was very impressive um, his gripping also the diverse gripping that he used in order to unsettle and unbalance his opponents obviously uh, you have to minimize the distance to get away from the strikes so if you have anything to add please let me know down below this was Shadi, and thank you for listening.